Jasmine is 23 and was brought into hospital and detained under section 136 of the Mental Health Act. She was very unwell at that time. She suffers from bipolar disorder and has been detained in hospital several times before. When unwell, she is known to become vulnerable to exploitation. Jasmine has been in a recovery ward for five months now and she is currently detained in hospital under section three of the Mental Health Act, which is an admission for treatment in hospital. She has responded well to treatment and is very settled. She has not been involved in any incidents with staff or patients since two weeks into her admission. She has used escorted and unescorted leave well over this period and her responsible clinician has recently granted home leave of up to seven hours once a week to visit her family. It is envisaged that Jasmine will be discharged soon and a community treatment order may be considered to try and help her break the cycles of relapse that have traditionally followed her discharge as she stops taking her medication. Jasmine has been doing really well and it has been agreed that she can have extra unescorted home leave to visit her family, which is in addition to her regular two hours unescorted leave each day. She knows she has to be back by 7pm and she is fine with that. In fact, the whole thing has made her very happy and it's obviously something that helps her feel she is getting close to discharge. I got an extra bit of leave so I called mum to let her know. She thought it was great and we arranged for me to come and visit her on Sunday. I'm so excited. I can feel the end of all this and I can't wait to be back out in the real world for good. Being at home was really great. Mum made a massive lunch and it was just so much fun chilling with everyone. Afterwards we decided to watch a film and I didn't realise the time so it went past seven which was when I was meant to be back on the ward. 7pm came and Jasmine hadn't returned. We had a discussion about how to proceed and Ella said she was AWOL, in breach of her leave, so we should call the police immediately and report her as a missing person. I thought that this was quite a drastic reaction to the situation, given Jasmine's recent behaviour and her improvement on the ward over the last few months. So I reminded Ella about the AWOL procedure and policy, and a key element in that is deciding if the police should be involved immediately or not. We need to assess whether the patient is of low, medium or high risk to themselves or others and Jasmine appeared to be low risk at the point she left the ward that day so we needed to take a proportionate course of action. Just call Jasmine's mother first, see if she can be located. If not, if she's not located there, we can think about contacting the police. Um, but I think she'll be there. Jasmine's doing really well. She's close to discharge. She's not going to mess up now. Fine, I'll call her now. Oh, hello. Hello, Mrs Manning. It's Ella from the ward. Um, Jasmine was due back at 7 o'clock. It's 7.30 now and she's still not back. I just wanted to check if you know where she is before we get in contact with the police. Oh, no, she's here with us. We've been having such a lovely time. We've completely lost all track of time. It's really not her fault. I'm so sorry. OK, no, that's good. That's really good. But can you put her back in a taxi and send her back to the ward? Oh, not a problem at all. I'll call one straight away. She should be back with you in about half an hour. Is that all right? OK, tell her not to worry. Um, she's not in trouble. But if you can just get her back to the ward. Great. Thanks a lot. Bye. When should the police be called? How important has Section 17 leave been for you? Um just to get a sense of normality and liberty that, that we all take for granted when we're not in a situation like that. So it is, um, it is vitally important. Oh, you're, you're desperate to get out for the afternoon or the other day or for a couple of hours. You're absolutely desperate to get out. The atmosphere, the way the wards are run, you're desperate to get out and you'll do anything. I think it's extremely, you know, really, really important because you know you you want hope, you know, and being in the hospital is for me. It's not it's not the real life, you know, and you can quite easily become sort of kind of vulnerable in the sense that it's a it's a false sense of security because it's not you know it's not the real world out there. It's been very important to get Section 17 leave to go out. Um, so that I can even just get air because you're so cooped up in the hospital there aren't even any balconies that you can go out on um, so just to get some air is good 
Can you say a bit about that? What's it like to go out with an escort? It depends who you're going with. Sometimes it's all right, but if you get a mem member of staff who you don't get on with, it can be nasty. The actual mechanics can be frustrating. You go up to the, the, the nurse in charge or whatever, and she sort of, or he, he or she sort of tells you it hasn't been signed yet, your section 717 leave. Then you've got to go back to your room. Then you go up, they tell you to come back an hour, half an hour later. You can't get access to the room because there's a queue or they're telling you they're busy. Um, you then go back to your room. You come back half an hour later. By the time what plans you made for the afternoon all have to change because you're expecting to leave, say, at one and um, you're still there at three o'clock. Sometimes in the hospital, if you don't get up at a certain time, then they say, well, you can't go out on leave. And it's, that's not fair. And it doesn't feel very fair either. And it is given out sometimes that there is a sort of a reward basis for going to meetings and things like that, which um, I don't think is always fair. I think it should be just recognition that you, know, you should be able to go out. Sort of the carrot and stick thing is not always the best. For me, it was like kind of told, like, you know, you're here now, um, these are the rules and regulations, um, you know, this is the section. So for me, it was kind of made very clear. Usually, if I've gone AWOL, they stop my leave. Um, any leave at all, unescorted, unescorted, um, which I suppose is they've got every right to do. I don't sort of begrudge them for doing that. Because you're an absconsion risk? Because I'm, yeah, because I abscond quite a lot. Does it feel like a punishment? It does feel a bit of a punishment when I don't get my leave back because it's not like one day or two days. It's, I've got to wait another week before the ward round and then they assess it again. I'm not quite sure what they're wanting me to demonstrate before I get my leave back, um, really, because I'm still the same person. I still need my leave.